Hi there, welcome back to another chemistry lesson. So now we will cover the concepts of Ka and Kb, or in other words, equil equilibrium constants of acids and bases. So Ka stands for equilibrium constant for acids and Kb equilibrium constant for bases. So let's start with the acids. First of all, last year we learned that when an acid dissociates greatly, it creates a lot of ions. So that means the concentration of H plus ions will be high. If there's a lot of H plus ions, we have a strong electrolyte. There's a lot of electricity that can be conducted. And that is a sign of a strong acid. So a strong acid dissociates a lot and creates a lot of H plus ions. So we have two cases here we're going to be looking at. The first one, HCl. So I have, let's, let's suppose, 100% of molecules of HCl that I dump into water. So I create a solution. In this case, my HCl is a very strong acid. So it dissociates completely. So there's no real equilibrium that gets created. The reaction is complete. So all the HCl dissociates. I have 0% of full molecule of HCl left. All I have left after it dissociates is 100% of H3O plus and of Cl minus. So that's the first case. That would be a strong acid. Otherwise, I can have a medium or a weak acid. So that would be an example of a very weak acid. Here we have vinegar or CH3COOH. So we start with 100 particles, 100 molecules. We put that in water, so it dissociates somewhat. Now, in this case, because it doesn't dissociate completely, there is an equilibrium that sets in. So I'm left in this example with 99% of my molecules as molecules, so they stay whole, and only 1% dissociate into H3O plus and CH3COO minus. So only one out of 100 really turned into ions. So in that case, I do have an equilibrium. I will have some molecules that will turn into ions that will dissociate, and some of these ions will recombine together to reform the original acid. So those are the two sides of my equilibrium. So in this case, because I have an, equilibri an equilibrium, I can calculate the percentage of ionization. So what do we do? We calculate how many H plus or H3O plus ions we have versus how many molecules we had origi uh, originally. So if I have 1% that dissociated, out of 100% of molecules, or I have one ion out of 100 molecules of acid that I had originally, well, I can calculate the percentage. I'm going to say one ion over originally 100 molecules times 100 is equal to 1% of dissociation. So I'm always comparing the concentration of H plus or H2O plus ions versus what we had originally times 100 to get a percentage. So that's the first concept. Secondly, since we have an equilibrium, we can calculate the constant. So here I have an example of an acid that is put in water. So HA is like saying X, so it's an acid. It dissociates and forms H3O plus and a negative ion, an anion. So if I write down my equation for the equilibrium constant, I will have products over reactants. So I have my H3O plus times my A minus over HA. Why did I not include H2O? Because it's a liquid. We do not include pure liquids in our calculation because they cannot be expressed as a concentration. So this is my Ka, or the calculation of my Ka. Now there is a way to simplify that. We know that the ratio is 1 for 1, right? So if I have 0.5 mole per liter of this, I'll have automatically 0.5 mole per liter of this, for example. So because the two concentrations are equivalent, what we do is that we replace A minus by another H3O plus because that's really what we're interested in. We're talking about an acid, so we're talking about the hydronium ions or the H plus ions, same thing. So that's what we want to focus on. So because they're the same concentration, we can replace the A minus by another H3O plus. So if I simplify some more, I get this, H2O plus squared. So that's what we'll be working with when we talk about Ka. Ka is equal to H3O plus, the concentration of, squared over the concentration of the acid. Now do not forget, this is at equilibrium. This is not the original concentration of the acid. So all these concentrations are always at equilibrium. So if we look at the ratio, 
If I form a lot of ions, I know that I have a very strong acid. So a strong acid would have a big number here, a small number at the bottom, which means I'd have a very large Ka. So that's what is explained over here. If the Ka is large, the acid is strong. Now the converse is also true. If it does not dissociate much, I'll have very little ions and most of my acid will stay as is. So I have a big number here, which means that my Ka, the value would be very small. So a weak acid would have a small value of Ka. Now you have some examples in your textbook that you can look at, they're already solved. I do encourage you to look at them. If you have any questions, you can ask about them in class. Now for strong acids, we can calculate the Ka, an actual very, very strong acid that will dissociate completely. Why? Because if it dissociates completely, the concentration at equilibrium, because there's no equilibrium, here this value ends up being zero. If we have a zero over here, we, have, we get such a large Ka that it's actually infinite. So we can't really calculate a value in this case. Plus it wouldn't make sense because it cannot attain equilibrium. It's a complete reaction. A strong acid will dissociate completely. Now here you have a list of strong acids. You do not need to know them by heart. It's just for your information. Now in the case of very strong acid, most often they will not give you a lot of information. They'll give you one piece of info. They'll give you, for example, the pH and they'll say calculate the concentration. So in that case, you'd have to go back to the previous lesson whereby we use the log and the pH and the whatever else to calculate those values. So if you only get one value in a question, just you can assume that it's a strong acid. If you get a bunch of values, and we'll look at examples uh, in two seconds, um, if you get a bunch of values, then you know that you're dealing with something else than a, than a strong acid. You have either a weak or a medium acid. In which case, this is what you're going to do. Okay, so here's an example. Suppose you measured the pH of a 0.25 mole per liter carbon, carbonic acid solution to be 3.48. What is the Ka for this acid? So first thing I did is to write down my reaction equilibrium. H2CO3, which is my carbonic acid, dissociates into H plus and HCO3. Oops, I should have put minus. Now, yes, there are two H's. We will only work with the first dissociation. I could take this ion and dissociate it some more into H plus and CO3 two minus, but I'm not going to go there. We're just going to work again with the first dissociation. So when the acid loses its first H plus. So what do we have as far as information goes? We have the pH, which is 3.48. So if the pH is 3.48, we can say that the concentration of H plus is equal to oops, 10 to the negative pH, right? So 10 to the negative 3.48 is equal to 0 0.000033 mole per liter. Now, because I have a weaker, so to speak, acid, I have to use an ice table to figure out all the information that I need in order to calculate the Ka. So, I know that I started with nothing over here, nothing over here. What else do I know? I just found the concentration of H plus at equilibrium. So I have 0 0.03, no, 0.0033 for the H plus. I know that it's the same for HCO3 minus which will in a sense be irrelevant because I'm not going to work with this ion just as I specified before. What I really need to find in order to find the Ka is the following. So Ka is equal to H plus squared, right? I just explained that because this concentration and this concentration at equilibrium will be the same, I might as well say H plus squared, which simplifies my life, over the concentration of my acid, which is H2CO3. Now, I just found the concentration of H+, so it's 0 0.00033, and I'm going to square that 
Now I'm still missing my concentration of acid at equilibrium. I know that my original concentration is 0.25. So I know that my value here is 0.25. I need to know how much reacted, right? So I need to know this value over here, but I know that over here there was a gain of 1, 2, 3, 0 0 0.00033. Because it, the, the ratios are 1 for 1, I know that the same amount was lost on this side, 0 0.00033. 3. So I can find my concentration at equilibrium over here, which ends up being 0 0.24967, which is very, 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 very close to the original of 0.25. So you will see very often that for very weak acids, it's practically not worth it to make a nice table. You could practically use the original concentration and it comes out the same, but unfortunately you can't know this until you make your ice table. So can you skip this step and just go with the original concentration over here and put 0.25? Yes, most of the time it will work. Will it work every time? No. So it's really up to you if you want to take the chance or not and, and save time or make sure that you have the right concentration. So here I'm going to put 0.24. Nine six seven. So now I will be able, with this value and this value, to calculate the value of the Ka, which should give me, according to what's hidden under this box, 4.4 times 10 to the negative 7. So in the case of Kb, it works exactly the same way as Ka, except that we're dealing with a base. So I have a base here. I dump it in water, so an OH will be released. And what they're showing here, this is basically out of your textbook, they're showing that the counterpart will combine with the other H of the water. What we're used to seeing, and it really comes out to the same, but maybe it will make more sense for you, is the following. So I would have a base, let's pretend it's NaOH. And I would put that in water. And that would give me Na plus aqueous and OH minus aqueous as well. So regardless of what you have here, what you have here, you know you have a positive ion as well as the OH minus ion. So if I write the Kb um, equilibrium constant law, I would have my OH times my positive ion over the concentration of my original base. Just like for the acid, because it's one for one, I can replace the positive, the concentration of the positive ion by another OH. And in this case, if I want to simplify, I get OH minus squared over the concentration of the base at equilibrium. So it works exactly the same way, like I said. Again, if the value of Kb is small, it's because the base was weak and did not dissociate much. If the Kb is large, the base is strong, so it dissociated much more. And if the base is super strong and dissociates completely, we cannot calculate the value of Kb the same way we, can, we could not for Ka because it becomes infinite, it becomes too large. Here again you have a few examples of problems in your textbook that you can look at, and if you have questions you can ask in class. Uh, as well as a list of bases, strong bases. Again, you don't have to know these by heart. Um, it's really just for your information. And again, if you're given very little information, most likely uh, what you'll have to do is convert back and forth between pH and concentration of OH- minus through the log laws and the 10 to the negative pH laws and whatnot, rather than using an ice table and going the long way. Okay, so an example. Here we have the pH of a 0.1 mole per liter solution of uh, an MG, MgOH2 solution, and it's measured to be 11.66. That pH is measured to be 11.66. What is the Kb for this substance? So first we'll write down MgOH2, so we'll write down the reaction equation. This dissociates into MgOH. We'll just do again. So this is MgOH plus, plus OH minus. We'll just do the first dissociation. 
And again, I could resplit this and have a second dissociation, but I'm not interested in that. We'll just do the first one. So if I make an ice table, I get zero and zero. I know that my original concentration was 0.1. I know that at, um, at equilibrium, my pH is 11.66, which means if my pH is 11.66, 14 minus my pH will be equal to my pOH, which in this case is 14 minus 11.66 is 2.34. So my pOH is 2.34. If I have my pOH, I can calculate my concentration of OH minus. OH minus is equal to 10 to the negative pOH. So in other words, 10 to the negative 2.34. And that gives me 0 0.0046. So now I have this concentration over here, 0 0.0046, which is the same as this one, 0 0.0046. I have my change, and I have my change over here, because it's one for one, I know that the change will be the same, right? It's one molecule for one molecule, or one mole for one mole. So in this case, what am I left with at equilibrium? I'm left with 0 0.0954. So again, this is fairly similar to 0.1. So again, I could use either this one or this one, but I'll be thorough. I'll use the real equilibrium um, concentration. So if I calculate my Kb, Kb will be equal to my concentration of OH minus squared, so 0.0046, let me put this in brackets, squared over 0 0.0954, and that will give me 0 0.0006. Um, two, two. Now, one last item. What is the relationship between Ka and Kb? I'm not going to get into the whole math of it. We know that Kw is the concentration of this times this. We know the Ka, the, the, the equation for Ka. We know the equation for Kb. And if we put all this in a melting pot, what comes out of it is really this over here. Kw is equal to Ka times Kb. So now you have a bunch of equations that you can play around with from the conversion from pH to concentration of H plus, pOH to concentration of OH minus, um, the value of Kw, the value of Ka, the value of Kb, and now you have a new rule Kw is also equal to Ka times Kb. So you have many tools in your toolbox to solve any kind of problem related to equilibrium uh, situations for an acid or for a base. So there you go. That's the end of this lesson. And I'll see you around the corner for your very last chemistry lesson. So don't forget to bring your Kleenex box just in case you get a little emotional at the end of the next lesson. All right. See you around. Bye.